In Oklahoma, tornadoes are a fact of life, and they threaten most of the United States, too. In fact, in parts of Oklahoma and Texas, we see more tornadoes per given area than any other place in the world. Tornadoes usually form from thunderstorms that develop in a particular set of environmental conditions. These storms are called supercell thunderstorms, the strongest and most severe type of storm. Particular changes in wind speed and wind direction all the way through the atmosphere are critical to developing a supercell. They often bring large hail and damaging winds. Now, not all supercell thunderstorms produce tornadoes. Wind speed and direction in a layer near the ground is critical for a supercell to produce a tornado. Sometimes the air near the ground is too cold or doesn't move in the right direction to trigger tornado development. However, when all of the environmental conditions are just right, large outbreaks of supercell thunderstorms and tornadoes can occur. The worst of these outbreaks can bring many strong tornadoes in several states. The damage, injuries, and even deaths from these storms can be widespread and tragic. One of the first big tornado outbreaks following World War II was the Palm Sunday tornado outbreak in 1965. 47 tornadoes killed 271 people in the Midwest. The aftermath of this outbreak started the tornado watch and tornado warning terms and systems we still use today. In 1974, another outbreak occurred. Meteorologists called this one the super outbreak since a staggering 148 tornadoes struck 13 states east of the Mississippi River, killing more than 300 people. More recently, in 2011, another devastating outbreak struck the southern United States. This outbreak brought a never-before-seen number of tornadoes, 360. Sadly, these tornadoes killed more than 300 people. Before our nationwide network of Doppler radars and our emphasis on timely and accurate tornado warnings, tornadoes often struck without warning. That happened in the quiet town of Woodward, Oklahoma on a Wednesday evening in April 1947. To date, that tornado is still the deadliest storm to strike Oklahoma. The first tornado from the supercell thunderstorm struck the tiny Texas panhandle town of White Deer, 120 miles southwest of Woodward. The storm quickly produced another tornado, which dissipated, then it spawned a third, more powerful tornado that quickly grew into a beast, almost two miles wide, wiping out the town of Glacier, Texas. The tornado continued northeast and slammed into the unsuspecting town of Woodward after dark at 842. It devastated 100 blocks of the town and killed an estimated 107 people, but the exact number is unknown. A 20-ton steel boiler tank at the town's power plant was thrown a block and a half, countless trees were shredded and debarked, and many homes and businesses were swept completely off their foundation. A highway bridge over the North Canadian River just north of Woodward was even damaged when part of the bridge deck was torn off. To make matters even worse, while people were digging out of the rubble, cold wind and snow swept in, blanketing the town. Now, the Fujita, or F-scale, wasn't introduced until 1971, but damage photos were often used to assign retroactive ratings to previous tornadoes, especially significant ones like this one. Based on damage pictures and eyewitness accounts of the Woodward tornado, it was rated F5 more than two decades after it hit. But perhaps the biggest mystery of the Woodward tornado doesn't involve the tornado at all. Joan Croft was four years old when her home was destroyed by the tornado. She had a relatively minor leg injury from a wood splinter. Joan's mother Cleta was killed and her stepfather Olin was seriously injured. Joan and her sister were taken to the hospital in Woodward and placed on a cot together in the hospital's basement. Her father was so badly injured he was flown to Oklahoma City for treatment. The night after the storm, two men dressed in khaki uniforms walked into the hospital and asked for Joan by name. They scooped her up, told hospital staff they were taking Joan to her family, waiting for her at a nearby town's hospital, and disappeared into the night. The television show Unsolved Mysteries featured the story in the search in 1993, and leads poured in, but none of them have panned out. Olin Croft died in 1986. He never found out what happened to his stepdaughter. The odds of a violent tornado sneaking up on a town now are nearly zero, thanks to our nationwide network of Doppler radars and some of the world's best severe weather meteorologists right here in the United States.